Hello and welcome to Organic Edible Garden. We're coming up to a full moon phase, which is a great time to put in your root crops. And today we're going to plant our potatoes, which we've been chitting for the last month. We're also going to look at our root crop bed, which we put in a while ago. The fennel at that end is sizing up. The dianthus, which we put as a barrier between that and the onions, are now flowering. And the daikon and the turnips, which we thinned about two weeks ago, are now standing up and looking great. And now they've got room to spread out. And our beetroot sizing up. Our other root crop, garlic. The stems now are starting to get really thick. And that's a good sign we're going to get good sized bulbs. So don't forget, just keep it well weeded and give it a weekly or fortnightly dose of seaweed. Homegrown potatoes are a luxury for the home gardener because they do take up a lot of space. And most people say, why bother when they're so cheap? Commercially grown potatoes are sprayed heavily and they're grown in soils using synthetic chemicals. So I like to grow my own because I know where they come from and they always taste better. We're going to plant our potatoes at the optimum time, which is really important for organic gardening. It's so important that your soil isn't too wet because we plant the tubers and there's too much rain, they can rot in the soil. Also, the soil needs to be a bit warmer, so if you feel you're still going to get frosts, maybe hold off for another month. Last summer, this bed was an insectary, and in overwinter, we planted a lot of brassicas, and even though we fed them well, they've taken a lot of nutrients out of the soil, which is not a bad thing for growing potatoes. The important thing to remember is that potatoes are part of the Solanum family, which includes things like tomatoes and eggplants and chilies. They have the same problems, disease and pests, so it's really best not to plant them in the same bed for two years running. However, if space is a real premium in your garden, you can always grow your potatoes in pots. Either a bag or a pot like this is a really good size. Just get a good potting mix, fill it up with a little bit down the bottom, put your potatoes on and fill them about two or three inches over the top. And just sprinkle a bit of rock dust on the top. The benefits of doing it in a pot like this is that you can keep it in a sunny position and it does warm up easily. The negatives are, you don't really ever get as much as you do out the garden bed, but it's really good to have your own potatoes. The next thing we're going to do is we'll dig some trenches. In a bed this size, we're about a, just over a metre, I can do two trenches, but if your bed's an narrower, just maybe one will do. Also, the soil is a little bit hard and it's not great. It doesn't really matter, because when we fill it in, we can add some other compost to it as it's growing. But the important thing is never to add fresh manure or fresh compost straight to where potatoes are. This can burn the new shoots as they emerge. I want to make these trenches as deep as possible. The deeper it is, the more potatoes I can get from it. I'm using my trusty old grubber to dig the trenches. I mean, you can use a spade, but I find this is usually the best tool for doing potatoes. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to plant our potatoes. Some of these have got lots of eyes on them and you can actually chop them up into pieces but I just find that if the soil's still wet, keeping them whole, you still get a lot of potatoes from it. The other thing I've got here is I've got two different types of potatoes. I've got my Cliff's Kidney which is a waxy potato and they're great for salads or just boiling. The others I've got are my agrias and the reason I grow agrias is I really really like the starchy potatoes. They make the best mashed potatoes and the best chips. We're going to plant these guys, hopefully with the eyes up, and about 20 to 30 centimetres apart. Before we fill in the trenches, we're going to add two important ingredients. The first thing we're going to add are neem granules. Not only is this a really good soil conditioner, but it'll protect the potatoes from a pest called psyllids, which is really making a big impact for the home gardeners. They'll, they'll attack things like your potatoes, your tomatoes, your tamarillos, anything of that family. And the second thing we're going to put in our trench are comfrey leaves. 
These work really well with potatoes and they often double the size of the crop. I grow comfrey deliberately under my fruit trees because of the amount of nutrients it can bring from the subsoil. And it doesn't matter that I take all of this away, within two weeks it'll be back. I'm going to put the neem granules in first and I'm just going to sprinkle some in. And I'll use this again when I plant my tomatoes. The next thing we do is put our comfrey leaves in. We're just going to sprinkle them right on the surface of the potatoes and then during the growing season we can put a second lot on top which will also break down. The important thing is never to have a bit of comfy root with your leaves because wherever they go, they'll sprout. Now we can start filling in our trench. And we sort of want to fill it in about two inches over the surface of the potatoes. We're going to try and leave the mound in the centre so we can just hill it up once they start shooting. We'll also start adding compost to this as well once it starts growing. The other things we can add to our garden bed are rock dust. This will make our plants really strong and keep them going during the growing season. So I'm just going to put a good sprinkle on where the trenches are. And the final additive we can put on our potatoes is blood and bone. We choose this because this is just N and P. And that's what's needed for potatoes. They need the nitrogen for their leaf growth and a P for their root growth. So we're just going to sprinkle this lightly on top. One of the things we'll never add to this bed is lime. Potatoes belong to the same family as tomatoes and all those other acid-loving plants. And it can cause a disease called scab to the potatoes. Now we're going to let the rain wash all of this in. And when the new shoots emerge, we can add more compost or soil and keep covering them up. Mm -hmm. 